In the anime Freerin, Beyond Journey's End, we follow the elven mage Freerin on her new journey, where she encounters both old enemies and friends, many of whom are exceptionally powerful. However, the question arises, in the series, how do these characters compare to the warriors of the past and to each other in terms of strength? That is what we will be discussing in this video. Before we dive in, here's a quick disclaimer. If you only plan to watch the anime and want to avoid spoilers, then you might want to stop watching now. I'll be mentioning some characters who are so far ahead in the story that they likely won't be included in the first 28 episode season of the anime. Another point to note is that the rankings I'm about to discuss are based on what has currently been shown and the known information about their strength. This includes past battles, stories about their strength, abilities, achievements, and their reputation to gauge their power. While I'm not claiming this analysis to be 100% accurate, I can say that it was not ranked randomly without reason. If you don't agree with some of my choices, I understand, and you're welcome to share your thoughts in the comments below. Again, I must repeat, this contains heavy spoilers, and I will not hold back in providing details to explain my reasoning. With that said, let's get started. 10. Denkin Denkin is an imperial mage and a first-class mage, originally from the Weiss region. He lost both parents to demon attacks and was raised by Gluck, the feudal lord of Weiss. As a young apprentice of Macht, who served as the personal mage for Gluck's family, Denkin developed his magical skills. He joined the imperial army as a mage, driven by the desire to gain power and influence to save his frail wife. But sadly, she passed away before he could save her. Trained by Macht, the strongest of the Sages of Destruction, and having honed his magic since childhood until his current age of 78, Denkin certainly has the pedigree and experience to be considered among the strongest. Notably, he was responsible for ending Macht. However, Denkin still ranks in 10th place, as his victory over Macht of El Dorado was largely due to his familiarity with Macht from extensive training during his youth. Denkin was also able to counter Macht's signature spell, Dia Golds, thanks to careful planning and precautionary measures before their confrontation. In his battle against Freerin during the first class mage exam though, Freerin defeated him without much difficulty, further solidifying his ranking. 9. Hero Himmel The hero who teamed up with Freerin the mage, Hyder the priest, and Aizen the warrior to vanquish the demon king is undoubtedly a formidable warrior. Despite having allies, many before him attempted to defeat the Demon King and failed, making Himmel and his group's success a testament to his extraordinary capabilities. Characterized by his serious yet charismatic demeanor, Himmel valued life and inspired hope in others. His benevolent nature is highlighted through his interactions with his companions, influencing Freerin and Hyder to adopt his helpful habits. Himmel's legacy in the world is marked by his numerous victories over demons, achieved with his trusty sword. Now, you might be thinking, Himmel is the legendary hero who defeated the Demon King. How can he rank so low? Well, if you've read up to the latest chapters and have seen all the characters so far, you might even say that I'm being generous. We know that during the time of the hero party, they took down great demons as a team and didn't solo them, remember their battle with Bose the Immortal. So, as much as I want to, I can't place him any higher than this. And you're welcome to disagree with me on whether you think this ranking is too low or too high. Honestly, it could go either way. I'd like to see more of his battle prowess unfold to make a more confident guess. But he is in this rank only if we look at his individual fighting ability. I believe his best traits are his strategic mind, leadership, and ability to bring out the best in his party members. If I consider those traits, he would easily shoot up to number one since with him leading the party, they can defeat any foe. 8. Flam, the mentor of Freerin, stands out as one of the most powerful human mages in history. Her role in shaping Freerin into the mage she is today has sparked curiosity about Flam's character. Intriguingly, Flam herself was a protege of Ciri, a figure renowned as one of the world's most powerful beings ever. Even though Flam's lifespan was relatively brief, her impact on history is enduring and she is still remembered among humans. Remarkably, after many years, a magical barrier she erected continues to function perfectly, effectively keeping demons from invading cities even in the present day. She is the progenitor of magic for mankind, 
and she is the reason why humans around the world began studying magic. That act initiated the process that enabled mankind to oppose the Demon King's army after a thousand years. She even managed to irritate Ciri with her final will. In battle, she surprises unknowing demons by limiting her mana, which ultimately leads to their demise. In the first few episodes, we even see her taking out three general-level demons in an instant. Although magic has advanced a lot since her passing, the fact that her barriers can still repel great demons a thousand years later is evidence that she still has aces up her sleeve and could possibly still match up with mages of the future. 7. Seven Sages of Destruction and Other Great Demons The Seven Sages of Destruction were a group of seven powerful demon mages who served under the Demon King until his downfall. They appeared to operate under the guidance of the Demon King's confidant, the Omniscient Schlacht. Historically, the sages played crucial roles as generals in the Demon King's army, controlling strategic locations in the Northern Lands. By the way, I've noticed some confusion in the community regarding chapters 116 and 117, where we see some great demons that some people mistake for members of the Seven Sages of Destruction. Just to clarify, not all great and strong demons are part of the Seven Sages of Destruction, but all members of the Seven Sages are indeed great demons. Some are stronger or on par with Freerin's current abilities, like Mocked and Solitaire, while others, such as Oro and Qual, are weaker than her. Whether a great demon is part of the Seven Sages of Destruction or not doesn't really matter. In some instances, a non-member can surpass a member, like the great demon Solitaire and the bloodstained god of war Rivali, who is the strongest demon warrior yet not a member of the Sages. I've included them all here because the Sages of Destruction and other great demons vary significantly in strength. Plus, I didn't want to list more than 10 entries in this ranking. 6. Freerin the Slayer Freerin, the mage who journeyed alongside the hero for a decade to vanquish the Demon King, is a central figure in the story, possessing formidable strength. Her mana levels are extraordinarily high, surpassing even those of several members of the Seven Sages of Destruction. Although she possesses vast amounts of mana, Freerin mastered the art of concealing her mana output to outweep demons, a skill she learned from Flam. Years of practice have made this restraint a habitual aspect of her abilities. Beyond her magical prowess, Freerin is adept at dissecting spells and strategies. In combat, she often scrutinizes her opponent's techniques, crafting effective counters to their moves. Like I said earlier, she also employs the same tactics as her master Flam, but Freerin's power is surely much stronger than her, due to the time she had to develop it. As we know from the story, mages who live longer get many more opportunities to become much stronger. She has learned a lot in the 1,000 years since her training with Flam, as well as from the 10-year Demon King subjugation quest she undertook with the Hero Party, which made her an even better mage and enabled her to cooperate effectively with her comrades. 5. Mokdavel Dorado quite possibly one of the best, or the best, demon portrayals in anime or in any media as a whole, Mokdavel Dorado is one of the strongest characters in the series as well. He is even mentioned as being the strongest of all the Seven Sages of Destruction. Although he is primarily known as a mage, Mok's physical strength is exceptional, making him a formidable opponent that few can match. Not to mention his overpowered signature spell Diagolds, that can finish almost any battle in an instant if he chooses to use it. Freerin aimed to avoid confrontation with him as much as possible, noting that she simply couldn't find a way to defeat him. After developing a spell to repel Diagolds, I believe Freerin might still struggle in a head-to-head -head battle with him, considering she had difficulty with Solitaire, who I believe is less powerful than Mokt since she backed away from her initial plan of killing him due to fear. However, you can make your own assumptions regarding that. 4. Omniscient Schlacht Among the Demon King's forces, the Seven Sages of Destruction are recognized as the most formidable. However, the Demon Omniscient Schlacht held a higher rank, serving as the Demon King's trusted advisor and confidant. Schlacht possessed the extraordinary ability to foresee the future. He could envision a multitude of potential futures and their outcomes allowing him to craft strategies to counteract them. As the Demon King's right hand, he played a pivotal role in overseeing the Seven Sages of Destruction and communicated the Demon King's commands to them. 
Schlacht's visionary powers were so advanced that he could reportedly see up to a millennium ahead. It's even mentioned by the great demon Solitor in Chapter 117 that Schlacht is a being who has seen the future trillions of times, which is mind-boggling. He may not have any battle record showcasing his abilities, but his power surely makes him a force to be reckoned with, especially considering that the next person on this list is credited as mankind's strongest due to possessing an identical power. Legend has it that he met his end in a climactic battle against this person, where they mutually ensured each other's downfall. With the current information I have, and based on what has been shown, mentioned, or hinted at in the story, the following three characters are so powerful that we could interchange their positions as one, two, and three. Three, Hero of the South. The Hero of the South earned his title from the valiant acts he accomplished before the time Himmel and Freeran began their quest to overthrow the Demon King. Known as Mankind's Strongest, and Freeran can't even deny that claim. His real name remains a mystery, yet his extraordinary strength is indisputable. This hero confronted not only the Seven Sages of Destruction but also the Demon King's chief aide, the Omniscient Schlacht. In these battles, he succeeded in defeating three of the Seven Sages along with Schlacht. While mages like Freeran are capable of defeating some members of the Seven Sages, the Hero of the South's achievement of battling all of them and eliminating multiple members stands as a remarkable and unparalleled feat. Not to mention that he was able to achieve all of that on his own, using his strength in his secret magic, which, like Schlacht's, allows him to see the future. Maybe they have a connection. But that is a topic for another video. 2. Siri. Siri, an elven mage, is undoubtedly among the most powerful characters in the series, standing out for her exceptional skill and extensive knowledge. As Flam's mentor, Siri is renowned for her wide-ranging expertise in magic. She refers to herself as a great mage from the mythical era and has managed to survive until the present day. Similar to Freeran, Siri typically appears detached and rarely shows her true emotions. Despite this, she has a penchant for battling formidable opponents and could be described as somewhat belligerent. In the series Freeran, it's shown that Freeran constantly keeps her mana output in check, with her full mana release being incredibly powerful. Siri's own controlled mana output, however, is comparable to Furin's maximum, and the true scope of her abilities remains largely unknown to many. We already got a glimpse of her fighting prowess when she seemingly toyed with Mach during their fight, prompting her apprentices to intervene and stop her from killing him. Like I said earlier, she is also so strong that you could even switch her with the number one spot, and I would be fine with it. However, I didn't place her there because she had an opportunity for an entire millennia to try and take out the person in the number one spot, yet she didn't seize it. This is especially notable since it's evident she dislikes demons and their actions as well, and she mostly appears as an ally to mankind. But still, she didn't manage to reach the number one spot. 1. The Great Demon King Now, I did mention that I would only include characters who already have significant information about their power. Yet, you might wonder why the Great Demon King, who hasn't even been seen in battle or using any abilities, gets to be number one? Well, hear me out. In the story of Freeran, demons are portrayed as creatures devoid of empathy, acting solely in their own interests. Despite their strong sense of individualism and self-serving tactics, they all appeared to follow one leader, the Demon King, demonstrating exceptional fealty and fear to him. Since demon societies typically value strength, the Demon King was undoubtedly an immensely powerful figure. Do you think demons like Mocked or Schlacht, who possess truly terrifying abilities, would just follow a random nobody who gives out orders but can't back them up with power? I don't think so. As the ruler of the demons, the Demon King engaged in centuries-long warfare against humans and even commanded his followers to slaughter the elves. His long reign eventually came to an end at the hands of Himmel the Hero's party. Prior to their success, however, many had attempted and failed to defeat him, losing their lives in the process. Siri even mentions her surprise how an elf like Freeran can even defeat the Demon King, which Freeran responded that she did not do it alone but together with her companions. I want to share a theory I've developed based on an earlier conversation between Flam and Siri, and how, despite Siri's immense strength and time to develop her magic, she couldn't defeat the Demon King. 
I believe the Demon King's signature magic allows him to overpower anyone who is not pure of heart or who doesn't believe that peace can ever be achieved in the world and that violence, war, and conflict are inevitable. So it's basically everyone in the world, and certainly the reason why no demon will ever be able to stand up to him. That's why our boy Himmel and the gang were able to finish him. In their world, visualization is paramount, and he genuinely believed, without a shadow of a doubt that nothing is impossible, even peace. Now, before we end this video, I would also like to add some details regarding the determination of these rankings. Naturally, it's quite challenging to rank these characters accurately because the power system in the story follows a somewhat rock-paper-scissors model at times. A character can be very strong, but then a mage might come in with a signature spell that can completely overwhelm that character's magic. Take for instance, the first-class mage Sense. She is a strong mage whose strength comes from the power to manipulate her hair for battle. Other mages are wary of her because her hair is layered with magic and isn't easily overcome. However, there's Yubel, who, though not as skilled as Sense, possesses an ability where if she visualizes herself cutting something, she can do it, disregarding any layers of mana put into it. Given this difficulty, I chose characters who would most likely win if they had just met and had no time for much preparation. Another thing you might be wondering, where the hell is Kraft? Well, even though we already know he's a legendary hero from the distant past, just a few statues and bits of vague dialogue aren't enough for us to make an educated guess for his placement. This is unlike the case of the Great Demon King, who was mentioned and referred to throughout the story. Another character who has a case for the number one spot is the Goddess of Creation. Actually, she could even take the number zero spot. Being a god with magic that includes time travel and other yet-to-be-discovered abilities, I don't think any character can compare to her for now. So, what do you think? Do you agree or disagree with my list? Let me know in the comments below.